Welcome to the second installment in our big Commander Masterclass. Enzo, once a Prince of Pentos, normally would have been sacrificed in times of hardship so that Pentos could appease the gods. However, he managed to survive and come into your service probably by killing every <laughs> thing in his way. Now, for more information, check out the director's cut. But he has a damage output when paired with a healer that can mean his base attack can hit over 9,000. 10 times. 90,000 attack is fairly easy for him to achieve, meaning he gets five in the weirwood. Now in the training grounds, it can be detrimental to take a healer. However, his base command is three times higher than any other tank, making him the best cavalry tank out there, so he might as well have five in the training grounds as well. Most of his strength, however, does come from the longer fights and also pairing with a healer, so against rebel leaders, he does lose out a bit. He's a respectable tank, but doesn't have the damage or buffs or support that you need, giving him only two points here. Enzo is the only tank that can do a tremendous amount of damage. He does have one requirement, and that's that he's gonna need a healer, plus he needs a lot of damage incoming. All than that, you're set to go to make him the strongest commander out there, even outmatching Julian, Tions, and Arias. So for that reason, damage output is 5. However, when it comes to support and crowd control, he has none. So he gets 0 points in both. Enzo's power lies in two of his skills. A perseverance. Enzo's attack is increased by 1% for every 1% health lost. Which means if you pair him with healers and you make sure he gets a lot of damage, he gets healed up again and gets damage again and gets healed up again increasing his attack at a terrible high rate because he has such a high base attack that percentual attack on top of that is gonna ramp up to insane levels beside that you can barely kill him because of his breakthrough every time his health is lower than 9000 he gains a shield absorbing the same amount of course then his perseverance won't work because he gets the damage on the shield first but that will only take a short time if he gets healed up in between then the whole process starts again and when he gets lower again than the 9000 he gets another shield that makes him absolutely insane and his skill level is way overpowered so for skills he gets five points now where someone like laena adds 30 percent to cavalry health attack and defense he adds 40 percent which of course makes his combat advancements five points absolutely insane high for a good cavalry formation and a must-have that leaves no room for city advancement so zero points there however in friendship enzo does struggle quite a bit the fact that he needs books which compete with the likes of seg uh, means that he's already on a lower tier and his overall friendship while it is comes in at 10 points and could be rather attractive is split between the lower categories of finance and command so therefore he's only giving two points so overall, this absolute unit of a commander comes in with 29 points. A must grab if you're running any cavalry formation and if you want to play the Weirwood on easy mode. From King's Landing, we have Phaeus. This pious commander is, well, let's be honest, rather average. In the Weirwood, he has one of the highest splash zone damages, actually. Uh, individually better than Cersei, better than... Varys, and better than Melisandre. However, he falls short otherwise, so we give him two points here. He's not that good when it comes to the training grounds, as his splash ability does need to be targeted, so one point is all he picks up. The same can be said in Rebel Leaders, he is just not that useful and his base damage is low enough to only net him one point. So his damage output, thanks to his massive buff, we will give him two points there. Every 10 seconds, he grants 20% resistance to himself and to allies for 5 seconds, which is a decent buff, but not worth more than 1 point in support. He unfortunately does not have any form of crowd control, so we get 0 points there. Overall, his skills are rather basic and actually don't bring any form of skill level to the table, therefore we give him 1 point in skills. When it comes to combat advancement, Faze gives Warrior's Fury, Infantry Attack, and the Warrior's Shield, which is the Infantry Defense. And what you really want is actually the Infantry Health, because that will give the biggest bonus. So for that reason, we cannot give him 3 points, but only 2 points there. As with other heroes, we've seen that the Gold bonus is extremely useful in nearly every situation, netting him 2 points there for City Advancement. 
When it comes to friendship, Faze is an interesting case. Having a perfect split between aptitude and finance, he does only have six points overall. However, because of that perfect split that makes him useful for an awful lot of economy characters, and the fact that he requires books, which are a fairly easy resource to get, that you often have a surplus of, we give him two points. Overall, the noble that gave up his privilege for a life in the clergy should have probably stayed as a noble, as the only nets 14 points. Hailing from Bear Island and part of House Mormont, Layla Mormont comes into our classification. Unfortunately, she suffers a bit in the Weirwood because there's no real good place to put her. Lacking a little bit of damage or lacking a little bit of defence means that she misses out on an awful lot of formations, so she only gets one point here. However, she does do a bit better in the training grounds. Her lack of absolute defence means that she only really has a use against infantry formations. She does an awful lot of damage, but can't survive unaided. So, two points here. And when it comes to rebel leaders, it's nearly the same situation. She does have a wondrous good attack, but her skills are not focused that way at all. And there are better damage dealers out there. Her tanking ability against infantry, though, means we do give her two points here. The good thing is she does bring some insta damage at the start of the battle. Since she adds a lot of crit and attack in the first 15 seconds, that might be enough to just burst a very specific target down while still having a formidable frontline. For that reason we give her also 2 in damage output. On support and crowd control she scores however nothing. Now another interesting aspect that might boost her damage output is that her actual active skill is done in a cone. When placed on a top of a bottom row, you can actually target up to 5 people. So that makes her skills half decent, especially when you quickly want to burn someone down, giving her 2 points in skills. Combat advancement she gives cavalry defense and health 30% and total attack 15%, but that makes her really specific for one specific formation, and that is cavalry front. For that reason we can only give her 3 points in combat advancement. Having three skills in combat advancements leaves you, of course, with zero points in city advancement. Another woman that likes dessert. With an overall quality of eight and five in command, there's only little left for combat raid, where she scores three stars. That doesn't make her too great, and we can only give her two points, mainly because she uses dessert once again, and even a free-to-play Sheila is a lot better than her then. Overall, the Warrior Mormont is a passable tank, passable damage dealer, passable flanker, passable skill set, passable friendship, passable combat leader, but passable just does not cut it. So she only brings a total of 14 points. And now we have Mengo. Mengo suffers an awful lot in the Weirwood. Because of his extremely low defense and health, you, he needs to occupy a second row slot, and there are much better alternatives available. While he could be useful in certain formation for damage, he doesn't come up that often, giving him only one star in the Weirwood. However, he's slightly better in the training grounds. Because your commanders are going to die anyway, you're better off dealing more damage to the enemy to make sure they die first, giving him two points there. He is nearly a must-have, however, when it comes to attacking infantry rebel leaders. His very high base attack, combined with the added proficiency bonus from attacking a type counter to him, means that we give him three points for rebel leaders. That very high base attack, combined with the skills that all serve to increase his attack even more, lands him a healthy 4 points for damage output, only being limited by the fact that his skills are not that potent. Since he technically reduces the defense on his active skill, he gets a 1 in support. However, he does not have anything in crowd control. When it comes to his skills, they are rather basic and some are even useless, because you can't put him in frontline, but he does increase his defense, for example, leaving him at only one point in skills. Since he brings cavalry attack and cavalry defense, he is a must-have in cavalry formations, giving him three points in combat advancement. And he does give wall defense, which is not as useless as fortifications, but only a very meager one. With an overall friendship quality of eight, with three of those in combat, one in leadership and four in command, He's a very attractive hero in the Friendship Tavern. However, the fact that he needs weapons and he competes with an awful lot of people means we can only really give him two here. 
Overall, we award Mengo the Blood Rider 18 points. Next up is another tank, also known as the Lone Ghost, named Andrea. Because she is such a decent tank, she falls a bit short in the way of it because she has no crowd control or any form of other control. For that, we give her two points. Since she can hold her own very well with most skills focused on defense, in the training rounds, she has more potential, giving her three points. However, while she's a tank with a capital T, she has no other good abilities that can be of use. So only one point in rebel leaders. Same can be said damage output. She has a very low base and her skills are suited for self-preservation. So one point there. She doesn't have any ally buffs or helps, so she gets zero points in support. However, one of her abilities does reduce an enemy's attack and strategy over time, getting exceedingly strong if the combat lasts that long. So we give her one point in crowd control. Overall, her skills are decent at keeping her alive, and she would score an awful lot higher if you buff her. Her extremely low strategy means her skills can be doubled fairly simply, Standing on her own, they're only worth two points. Andrea has a very good set of combat advancements. Infantry, health, attack and defense all at 30%. This makes her ideal to send with a strong infantry formation, giving her four points in combat advancement. Unfortunately, with three combat advancements, you have no room for city advancements, leaving her with zero points. When it comes to friendship, she has an overall quality of 7, which is remarkably low for a paid commander. On top of that, she gives leadership, which would potentially give her 3 points in friendship, but she does use desert. And once you start spending on commanders, there are an awful lot of commanders that actually use desert. For that reason, because of her overall quality also being that low and the rest just being aptitude, we give her only 2 points. Andrea, the lone ghost of the Stormlands, channeling the spirit of the Durandans, unfortunately does not live up to the Storm King's namesake, bringing in 16 points. While respectable, is not worthy of bringing the fury. Next up, we have Russell. Russell is one of the earliest tanks you unlock as a free-to-play player, and gets three points in the Weirwood for his amazing durability and tankiness. He has a self-heal, which allows you to focus on other commanders, this also carries over to the training ground. The self-heal means he doesn't rely on being healed by others and can stand solo for a long time due to his amazing defense. However, he's not quite as good as Seg or Kevin, giving him three points. He only gets one point, however, in rebel leaders due to his skills being limited and attack being very low. He is, however, very useful early game when he allows you to admit a healer from your party, giving you more damage overall. When it comes to damage output, he has a pretty decent burst which can do up to 10,000 damage, which can half a lower opponent. For that reason, he gets 2 points. When it comes to support, his surprise can actually reduce the target strategy by 44. That means he has some minor support, giving it 1 point. However, when it comes to crowd control, he has nothing, so that gives it 0 points. His skills have a bit of everything, a bit of attack, a bit of healing, a bit of defense, but don't excel specifically in any targeted area, therefore he gets two points in skills. Russell only has one combat specialization, however, it's 30% cavalry attack, and attack is one of the most useful stats to have on the commanders, therefore we're giving him two points here. This is combined with a building construction speed of 20%, giving him two points in this category, his other skill is stone and is not enough to gain him an extra point on its own as it's only useful for a specific circumstance in a hyper farm. Finally, we have his friendship. With an overall quality of 5, it's extremely low. However, meat is fairly easy to come by and the fact that the points are spread on 2 command and 3 combat rate make him very useful hero to upgrade, giving him a solid 2 points there as well. Overall, Russell comes in at a respectable 18 points. While we're on the subject of cavalry tanks, next up is Rob Stark. And Rob Stark is a key commander for almost all the players because it's one of the commanders you unlock first. And with that comes the Weirwood. And in the Weirwood, he is also the commander you bring into every fight. Mainly because of his insane amount of crowd control. For that reason, we give it 5 points on the Weirwood. Now, unlike other tanks, in the training ground, Rob does not excel as much as other tanks because he does have an extra heal bonus and he relies on a healer 
to reach his full potential. For that reason, we give him two points in the training grounds. Rebel leaders are a very difficult category for tanks, and usually many players don't even use tanks at all. Until you unlock someone who has a high potential to frontline but is not a tank, like Jeanne, Rob Stark will be one of your key commanders to actually put down to tank against rebel leaders also because of his high damage in comparison and his higher base attack. However, there is nothing that boosts Rob Stark's rather high base attack. Therefore, he only gets one point in damage output. Next up, Rob is a fairly competent support hero. His winter is coming. Adds 700 defense to every ally at the beginning of a battle. This is a permanent buff to every single one of your other commanders, giving him two points in support. But where he really does excel is crowd control, with a five second stun, a second minor stun as well, and his abilities that deal damage, he gets a solid four points. The only reason why he doesn't get five points in this category is sometimes it's difficult to aim his ability, and his very rather high strategy means it takes a while for his ability to load. All in all, his skills come out at a respectable two points. Good for defense, but doesn't excel. As for Rob's specializations, his combat advancement of cavalry defense and cavalry health is rather substantial. However, missing the attack means we only give him two points for these. His last skill is an increase of gold production by up to 50%. This by itself is nearly always useful and everybody benefits from that, giving him two points there as well. Rob's friendship stats is another point in his favor. With 11 overall quality, and four in combat and two in leadership, he's an extremely good commander to upgrade. However, his reliance on weapons, one of the most in demand items, means we only give him four points here. Because Rob can be used in nearly every situation, he gets a very strong 26 points. Hailing all the way from Bravos, Sonara the Water Dancer is an example of how impactful commanders can come in small packages. With a very high damage output, she finds an awful lot of use in the Wearwood countering spearmen, heroes and formations. For that we give her three points. However, in the training grounds, her poor health and defense really does hit her hard, as the opportunity cost of putting a better infantry D, uh, DPS is just too high, so she only gains two points here. Because her damage is mainly attack based, and her reliance on attacking a single target, she does well with rebel leaders, giving her three points. And this all ties to her damage, getting her three points there as well. Well, Sonara doesn't have any outside buffs, doesn't help any of her allies directly, meaning she gets zero points in support. However, one of her skills does reduce the defense of the target she's attacking, making them weaker for everybody else, so she gains one point in crowd control. The problem with Sonara, her skills ramp up rather quickly and they also cap out quickly. And for some situations that's ideal, and for others it's actually not. For example, if you look at the rebel leaders, it's perfect that she reduced defense of a single target, because then you know, unlike Jamie who has a small chance to reduce the defense, you're sure that the, target, the only target that matters actually gets reduced damage over time. However, when you look at the training ground, where she relies on enemies to use an active skill, you'll see that she falls really short, because it often takes a long time before the enemy starts using an active skill, which means she's going to ramp up much slower because she cannot get that skill off, making her DPS being too low for too long for her to use a back backline slot, actually. For that reason, we can only give her skills two points. Unlike Miranda and unlike Laena, her skills are perfectly done right when it comes to combat specializations. She has infantry, defense and health and they both go to 30% but she also has total attack which makes her much more viable in mixed formations especially when they go to 3 or 4 mixed formations because she will boost all the attacks but she also gives everything they need to the very strong front line. For that reason we give her 5 points. City advancement however she has none. There are an awful lot of girls who like dessert. And also, many of these girls have full combat rate. Think about Sheila, think about Miranda, think about Sonera, and they all compete for the same dessert. With an overall quality of 8, 4 on finance and 4 on combat rate, she is just like all the other girls. That means she only gets 2 points in friendship. Overall, the water dancer from Bravos 
comes in with 21 points. Very useful commander in most situations. Always useful to fill in a hole that you can't otherwise assign another commander to. It doesn't stand out in any areas. However, an absolute perfect combat commander for most of us. And thank you all for watching. On your screen you should have links to the Coruscant Director's Cut for the video if you're interested in learning more, and also the next episode once it becomes available. Please remember to like and subscribe as it helps the channel grow and basically motivates us to make more. So, thank you for watching again.